Hello, everybody. It's Jay Rowe. We're going to dive right into uh, Game 2 of the World Chess Championships of 2010. Current World Chess Champion Anand is playing Topolov the Challenger. And uh, Anand really lost big yesterday in Game 1. And um, coming into the Game 2 today with the white pieces, he had to uh, definitely be on his A game uh, because you don't want to lose the first two games, uh, especially as a defending champion. Um, that would be a huge, huge blow to your confidence level moving forward. So um, Anand definitely had to play sharp today. So we're going to find out if he did. Um, um, on a side note, it was it was kind of interesting yesterday after I posted the first video. Um, the last two moves in that video were wrong because the live viewer from the official site uh, pumped the incorrect moves uh, for a period of time. And after I had made the video, um, it, it got corrected. And uh, I, I'm going to leave it as is. I put an annotation bubble on the video um, because it is just the last two moves. And really, um, after Topolov's awesome bishop move, it was all over for an end anyway. But um, I thought it was interesting that it just goes to show, you know, how many people watch these live games, and even major chess sites and grandmaster blogs got those last two moves wrong uh, for a period of time. So, you know, that's just a footnote of the history of the of this uh, match so far. So I'm going to leave that up there. I uh, put the annotation over the mistake on those two moves, and really, it doesn't. Uh, I didn't really get into a lot of detail on those two moves anyway, and I started to talk a little bit more about the match in general. So I'm not going to take the video down and fix it. And put it back up there because you know the spirit of these videos for me is just to have fun talk about the world chess championship match and those mistakes that were put on the live viewer um, you know before they corrected it that happened so that's actually a part of what went down and that's the way it is so um, but anyway I want to get right into game two here because uh, like I was saying you know Anand's coming into game two under a lot of pressure Topolov really took it to him yesterday with some very aggressive attacking chess and like I said yesterday that's definitely not Anand's style so it's going to be really interesting to see what he brought to the table today. Um, you know, in fact, as I look at this match and, and the games that are taking place, um, I, I've kind of coined a little phrase that I, I say in my head when I'm watching. I, I look at Anand and, and I call him the analyzer Anand, and then when I'm looking at Topolov um, on the live video stream, I'm thinking, you know, the tiger Topolov, because, you know, Topolov is, has said that he's just going to he's gonna give it all on this match, he's going to bring it, and, uh, you know, Anand's going to have to deal with that. Um, so Anand had the white pieces uh, on this game, and uh, like I said before, he's under a lot of pressure to perform here today, and uh, he opened up with a queen's pawn opening, so pawn to d4, and uh, from here Topolov played knight up to f6, and Anand pushed his pawn up now to c4, so identical to the game one, um, the same strategy used from uh, Topolov in the early first few moves, and from here now um, Topolov plays uh, pawn up now to e6, so he's preparing to thrust his d-pawn forward to d5, uh, because uh, once he plays d5, of course he'll have the pawn here on e6, and the knight attacking that square. Uh, from this position though, Anand just simply plays knight up to f3, Three. From here, Topolov does thrust that deep pawn up to d5, and that does not take it. Instead, it opts to uh, get ready to Fianchetto as bishop, so he plays pawn up to g3. Topolov takes a pawn now on c4, so he's a pawn up in the position, and then doesn't worry about that, though, and just Fianchetto's his bishop onto g2, giving an access along this nice light square diagonal, also preparing for a castle. Uh, from here now, Topolov plays a pawn up to a6, and we're basically in a Catalan structure. Now, if anybody would have asked me leading up to the World Chess Championship of this year, um, if we would have seen a Grunfeld and a Catalan structure in the first two games, I would have been like, uh, uh, no. But that just goes to show you that it's not necessarily the opening, it's the players behind the opening. You know, you'll, you'll have people that tell you, you know, this opening is better than this opening, and this opening is better than that opening. But at the end of the day, you know, if it's if it's a solid opening strategy, it doesn't matter what opening it is, it's the person behind the pieces that's going to make it, you know, make or break it. So I always think that that's uh, worthwhile to consider. Um, so anyway, after Topolov plays pawn to a6 now, and then plays knight up now to e5. And now this is attacking that uh, pawn that Topolov is currently ahead in the position. It's attacking the pawn here on c4. But it's also opening up access for this light square bishop attacking the pawn on b7. Um, what that basically means is that Topolov can't really move his bishop sitting here on c8. So this bishop is kind of hemmed down now to the protection of this pawn. So it was a nice little move from Anand in the position. Uh, from here now, Topolov doesn't actually defend the pawn. Uh, he just simply pushes his own pawn up now to uh, c5, attacking the pawn here on d4. So we have the queen and the pawn attacking this pawn. Uh, from here now, Anand simply develops his knight up now to a3. So the second game in a row, Anand's actually put a knight on the rim of the board. Uh, but in, you know, in the process of doing so, he's attacking the pawn here on c4. Uh, so basically he's saying, okay, you can have the pawn here on d4, uh, but I'm going to get that pawn here on c4, uh, which is what happens. So Topolov takes a pawn on d4, Anand takes a pawn now on c4, and from here, Topolov develops his bishop now to c5. Um, so Anand is still a pawn back in the position, but he's definitely got some activity going 
line with his pieces. Uh, once again, we have the bishop on g2, uh, bearing down here on the pawn on b7. Uh, we have the knights protecting each other here on e5 and c4. Um, so, you know, white is definitely in, in a workable position. Uh, from here, Nan castles, Topolov castles in kind, and now Nan plays his bishop up now to uh, d2. So giving the bishop access uh, along two dark square diagonals, get, leaving the options open for the piece, also developing that piece that wasn't uh, doing a whole heck of a lot here on c1. Now, once again, we got to kind of look back to this pawn on b7 because, you know, Topolov can't do anything with his bishop still uh, because of this hole here on d5, allowing this bishop to attack that pawn. Um, so, you know, Anand's definitely a little bit better in terms of peace activity here. Uh, but nonetheless, moving forwards from here, Topolov swings his knight over now to d5. So he's basically clogging up the hole here on d5, taking away the scope of that bishop, freeing up this pawn here on b7 so it doesn't necessarily need a defender right away. Um, from here now, Anand develops his rook to c1. Um, so he's going to start to uh, you know gain some strength here along the c file. Uh, from this position, Topolov places his knight up to d7, attacking Anand's knight here on e5. Now, Anand doesn't want to um, you know leave his knight to get uh, captured here because if Topolov comes down, takes the knight, and Anand recaptures his knight, that allowed uh, Black to play a nice timely f6 uh, at some point, kicking that knight, also gaining a nice strong center pawn structure, uh, because these three pawns will be able to support themselves, because currently, if we look at the position, the only defender of the pawn here on d4 is this bishop, um, so that would just benefit Black, so instead of doing that, Anand just simply swings his knight back now to uh, d3, attacking the dark square bishop of Topolovs, so he's taken away that option to get these pawns working together, uh, you know, as easy as uh, uh, Topolov would like, because remember, this knight here needs this pawn sitting on e6 to defend it. Um, so, uh, facing you know his bishop being under attack, Topolov swings his bishop back to a7, and from here now, Anand attacks the queen by playing his bishop up to a5. Um, so the queen's got to move. Topolov moves the queen to e7, and from here, Anand brings his queen up now to b3. From this position, Topolov swings his rook over to uh, b8 to give this pawn another defender, and from here now, Anand swings his queen to a3. So he's attacking uh, Topolov's queen. Queen. Now, on some of the commentary that I was listening to um, and looking at as the game was progressing live, um, people weren't happy with the next move that came from Toplop, but, you know, there's really not a lot of great options in this position for Black other than to take that queen, which is what Topolov played. Um, you know, if you guys can think of a better move that wouldn't, uh, you know, lose time and allow White to continue to develop rapidly, definitely let me know. Uh, but I think Topolov played probably the best move in the position, and, um, you know, he does get doubled up pawns here, though, to work with. Maybe that's what Topolov was thinking, because Anand took with the pawn, doubling up the pawns on a2 and a3. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, like, I mean, I didn't really see anywhere else for that queen to go that, you know, sure, it can slink back here to uh, e8, but, you know, it's not really accomplishing a great deal. At least by taking, um, you know, he's making Anand make a, a pretty big decision here as to what he's going to capture back with. Um, he could have captured both the knight if he wanted to, but he elected to go with a doubled up pawn. So I thought that, that was interesting. Uh, from this position, now, uh, Topolov swings his knight up to f6, and Anand swings his knight up now to e5. Um, so we have this knight on a very annoying square again, because this pawn sitting here on f7 can't be pushed forward to kick it. Now this bishop can't come out here to d7. So this bishop is very much hemmed in, even though it's not really directly being threatened by any pieces. Um, so, you know, all throughout the game so far, that bishop has just been kind of locked there. And Anand did a really good job of shutting that bishop down. First of all, you know, we had the bishop attacking the pawn here on b seven so that this bishop had to defend it. Now we've got the knight beautifully perched on e five, attacking the square here on d seven. Um, so if Topolov wants to bring out this bishop, it's gonna be get traded off. So uh Nan's gonna get a knight for a bishop and then probably get to jump in with a knight here to e five anyway. Um, so I thought that Nanand was really playing quite sharp chess in this position. Um, I haven't really you know seen a lot from Topolov in terms of aggressive play so far, uh, but Anand is definitely playing smart chess. So from this position Topolov swings his rook over to e eight and and Nan plays his rook up now to c2, basically getting ready to double up the rooks along the c file, which is going to be quite monstrous, especially when we take a look at White's peace activity. Uh, from here now, Topolov attacks a bishop on a5, um, and Nan swings his bishop back to uh, d2, and from here now, Topolov finally gets that bishop going and places his bishop on to uh, b7. And now Nan swings his rook over to c1, so we have these monstrous rooks just bearing down along the c file, and Nan's got a very workable position to play with, because, you know, he's got these rooks bearing down on the c file, got a very nice knight sitting here on d3 and e5, and of course we've got this light square bishop Fianchetto carving along this light square diagonal. Um, so definitely a 
very playable position for Anand. Is he playing really aggressive chess? No. Is he playing smart chess? Yes. And uh, it's working in his favor so far in the in the game. Uh, so from here now, Toplov swings his rook over to d8, and Anand pushes his pawn up now to f4. So just basically improving upon his position, giving the knight here another defender on e5, and basically just playing smart chess. Uh, so from this position, Toplov swings his bishop now to b8, attacking the knight on e5. But Anand doesn't have to worry about that, because he has that really nice knight sitting on d3 um, that he can just recapture with, and that knight would be supported by the pawn here on f4. So instead of worrying anything about this kind of uh, threat that uh, Toplov was trying to present him, Anand pushes his pawn up now to a4. And basically this is doing a couple of things. First of all, Toplov won't be able to bring this pawn down without uh, you know Anand recapturing, and then all of a sudden these rooks can swing over to the b file and just start to lay into it. Um, also, um, you know he's threatening to play something like a5 if he can get the rooks working on the b file as well, because this bishop sitting here on b7 is not defended. Uh, so to prevent kind of all of those options from happening, Toplov pushes his own pawn up now to a5 to prevent that a4 pawn from creeping up that a file any farther. Um, and from here now, Anand swings his knight up now to c6 in a nice aggressive move. He's attacking the bishop on b8. He's also attacking the rook on d8. Um, so Toplov definitely has to do something about this. So the only option that he really has is to capture with the bishop, at which point Anand comes in with his rook now capturing here on c6. And from here now, Toplov pushes his pawn up to h5. Anand continues with the pressure, though, and places his rook now onto c4, attacking the pawn on d4, uh, which is currently undefended. So facing this threat, Toplov came up with knight down to e3, basically attacking the rook sitting here on c4, also attacking the bishop on g2, but that also opened up access for the rook to defend the pawn here on d4. So it was an interesting move by Toplov. Uh, from here, though, Anand just takes that knight on e3, and when Toplov recaptures, Anand places bishop up now to uh, f3. Um, so giving this pawn a defender, uh, in case one of these rooks are able to come down at some point, uh, but also attacking the pawn here on h5, kind of marrying this knight down to protecting it. Um, so to kind of free up his knight, Toplov plays his pawn up now to uh, g6, um, giving this pawn here another defender, but this allows Anand now to capture a pawn in the position, and he takes a pawn on b6. Uh, facing this, Toplov plays his bishop over to a7, attacking the rook, probably hoping that Anand might fall for a cheap tactic in this position. Uh, for example, if Anand were to play something like rook to a6, attacking both the bishop and the pawn, uh, from here, Toplov can sack the exchange, basically capturing the knight on d3, and if Anand were to take back with the pawn, uh, he can push his pawn forward with check, and if the rook takes the bishop here, then he can just promote to a queen. The problem with this, unfortunately, for uh, Toplov, however, is that none of this is really forced. For example, if we go back to the initial rook uh, capturing the knight here on d3, uh, Anand can simply play rook takes uh, bishop on a7, if he goes down that line uh, whatsoever. Uh, but unfortunately uh, for Toplov, Anand didn't really fall for any of this, uh, and he simply just retreated his rook back now to b3, giving that knight on d3 another defender, so totally taking away that tactical opportunity. Um, so Anand definitely saw that coming. Uh, from here now, Toplov swung his rook down now to d4, attacking the rook on c4, but Anand didn't want to have anything to do with that and simply played his rook to c7, attacking the bishop on a7. Uh, from here, Toplov played his bishop now to b8, attacking that rook, and now Anand just simply swings the rook down now to c5, attacking the pawn here on a5. Now, from this position, Topolov played his bishop over to uh, d6, attacking that rook, allowing Anand to actually capture that pawn on a5, and now all of a sudden we have, you know, two passed pawns on the a file with, you know, huge support in the area. We've got the rook sitting on a5, we've got the rook sitting on b3, uh, we have the bishop on f3, all pointing towards a general promotion area of these two pawns. Um, so this is just a really messed up position for Toplov to have to work for. Um, and while I was watching the live commentary, you know, people were think thinking that the resignation would be coming pretty, pretty soon. Um, so it's really not a good position for Toplov here. Um, but facing this, Toplov played his rook over to c8. He's going to try to drum up some action here to get rid of some of these pawns here on the a file. Uh, but Anand just plays it really smart. He plays his king up to g2. Toplov brings his rook down now to c2. Uh, but from here, Anand just pushes his pawn up to a3. So it is under the firepower of this dark square bishop, but it still has one defender here with the rook on b3. And from here now, Toplov swings his rook over to uh, a2 to give another attacker to that pawn. And Anand simply blocks that bishop's scope to this pawn here on a3 and swings his knight over to b4, attacking the rook. Uh, now facing this, Toplov took that knight off the table, allowing Anand to capture back with the pawn. So now we have two connected pass pawns in the position. Um, so definitely a dynamic position here uh, for, for Anand to work with. Uh, from here now, Toplov tries to bring his knight over to d5, 
giving two attackers here to the pawn on b4. And from here now, and now just pushes that pawn up now to b5. Now, this does leave the pawn hanging here on a4. Uh, but if Topolov were to come in and capture this, this b pawn would just be monstrous marching down on the b file. And, and, and in fact, that's what happens. Uh, Topolov comes in, takes the a pawn, and then recaptures. Uh, Topolov has to recapture with the rook here on a4. And now Anan simply takes that knight now on d5, forcing this pawn to recapture and pushes that b pawn up. So the b pawn is now two squares away from promotion. And there's virtually nothing that Topolov's going to be able to do to save this game from this position. Um, he tries to play his rook to a8 to give, uh, you know, get the rook over to b8 to blockade this pawn, uh, which is basically what happens because Anan attacks the rook. He swings the rook over to b8 now, but now Anan simply plays his king up to f3, and this king is monstrous. It's attacking the pawn on e3. There's no way that uh, Topolov can really defend it. He tries to push the pawn up now to d4, but now the king just comes into uh, e5, or sorry, e4, and it's it's all over. Topolov resigned in this position uh, because he's going to lose all these pawns. Um, and Nan's got a beautiful pawn sitting on b7. Um, it's just it's totally lost for Topolov. Um, so it was definitely an interesting game. Like, Anand wasn't a, a huge, aggressive, attacking player in this game. He was just playing simple, basic chess, following the principles of chess. Like, if we look back to game one, what happened to Anand? Well, he got his king into a very dangerous position. Topolov was able to sacrifice some material to take advantage of that king's uh, vulnerability and win the game. In this game, Anand came out with a Catalan-like structure, with, which basically gave his king a very safe position to work with right from the start and just played chess. He played very strategically and uh, didn't get, you know, didn't get ahead of himself and instead allowed Topolov to make the moves that weaken Topolov's position all the while while Anand is building up the strength of his own position. Uh, so definitely an interesting game for game two. Anand pretty much had to come out with a big one today because if he would have lost a second game, uh, you know, in the first two games, if he would have lost both games, um, his confidence level would just be shattered and uh, Topolov would probably just walk over him for the rest of the tournament. Um, so there definitely was a lot of pressure for Anand today, and he definitely rose to that challenge. And, uh, you know, it's an interesting first two games, because on the first game, we have Topolov making Anand look a little bit silly. Um, and now in game two, Anand makes Topolov look a little silly with the white pieces. Um, so we're all tied up one apiece, and uh, this match is just getting started. And it's going to be a doozy. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. Now, both players have one day off before the next two games. So we'll get that video, uh, the next video out for game three sometime Tuesday evening, because I got work so it'll probably be a little bit later, but uh, it'll definitely get up there. So take care. Hope you enjoy the video, and we'll see you next time.